I think the family office world is, first of all, a rapidly growing business. Um, there's wealth has been created, and new wealth has been created, you know, emerging markets such as China and, and India and so on. So it's a much broader, bigger, robust industry than it is today. I think there's also different types of what family offices mean. Um, and we have traditional single family offices and multiple family offices which take care of several families. And the need there was it gets very expensive to have your own family office and have your own professional staff. So we're seeing multiple family offices you know, generate. The third new approach is what I would call a virtual family office where the features of a family office are put together but not with full time staff but a family can have engaged their own counsel for legal and estate and tax planning maybe their own investment council, their own insurance, and they all talk to each other. So it's a very coordinated approach. And they may have some administrative support to handle some of the software skills like concierge services uh, and so on. So uh, the whole area, I think, is really evolving. And I see that as a growth industry uh, that will you know, benefit more and more families going forward. What I'm speaking about today is the problem that many family offices have in terms of trap family business investments. And that would also include private equity investments where a large portion of the family's overall wealth and portfolio is trapped within a family business. That has significant implications in terms of lowering returns on investment, less liquidity for the family, and increased risk, particular exposure to tail risk and several other unknown risks that you're not really being paid for. And what we find when we go out and talk to clients and families is I'll ask them, what does your family wealth portfolio look like? And we'll see a wonderful little pie chart that we can draw with. There's assets and equities, assets and fixed income alternatives, PE and so on. That looks like a very nice balanced portfolio. And of course, our next question will be, what about this family business? And the response is typically, oh, that's not part of our investments. That's our operating entity. That's a kind of a different situation. That's part of what we're all about, our legacy and so on. So these are our investments over here. Well, what is the family business worth? And you find out when you put that into the pie chart, it's a disproportion, perhaps 70% of the family's wealth is tied up within the family business. No one would ever design an investment portfolio that way, yet so many families have their wealth concentrated in an illiquid, unrealized asset that's taking on a huge risk, and they're just not aware of it. We designed a process called the Family Wealth Roadmap, which is basically a very structured process to determine how to transfer part of the family business net worth outside of the family business into special purpose entities that can be focused at various shareholder needs. Part of the art of the transaction is really to understand what the individual stakeholders need in the family and also what the family business needs in terms of its capital requirements and then designing some strategies to be able to transfer part of that net worth from the family business to special purpose entities that have specific target focuses based upon the needs of the family and the business. Part of that is through putting debt on the books. The other part is through rationalizing your asset mix. Do you have the right amount of working capital? Are there unused fixed assets? And how efficiently are you using your capital in your free ups and cash through unrealized assets to be able to distribute to the shareholders? Another way is, for example, looking at real estate. When real estate is held captive in an operating business, separating those two entities would allow assets that get moved out of the family business into special purpose entities that basically allow you then diversify the overall portfolio. The four C's of success. As we found, most family dynamic issues can be related to one or more of these four C's. Our four C's of success are consideration, communication, connectivity, and compensation. When we look at these four categories, we can really understand what some of the issues are related to family dynamics. For example, connectivity is one that people probably don't fully appreciate. But growing up in a family business as we did, and sitting at the dinner tables, hearing about family business issues, I know how connected I felt, and I also know how connected my third and fourth generation cousins feel, despite the fact that their fathers may or may not have been as active in the business as my father was, who was CEO, they still look at this as daddy's business. So the next generation, to keep them engaged, they need to feel a sense of connectedness to the family, family enterprise, and there are multiple ways that you can do that. Consideration is another aspect of the family wealth roadmap that allows you to determine you know, what's important to each of the shareholders on an individual basis. 
reaching out and understanding their needs, both individual and as a group of shareholders, is a key ingredient to developing these special purpose entities that then can meet both family and the family enterprise objectives. Then a third C is communication. And so often it's just a lack of communication, particularly for the passive stakeholders. They're the ones that somewhat feel trapped in their family business or family enterprise where they don't have any real authority, they don't know what's going on, it's a very awkward situation. And that's where the surprise can come, happen when you find out unhappy, this is the shareholders, quite often they're the passive shareholders. So improving communication is another aspect of the Family Wealth Roadmap where we're able to create special purpose entities that allow various family members to be engaged in one of these or more of these special purpose entities. So they're connected, they get a better communication, uh, they have a chance to you know, have their, their issues considered. And then of course the last C, compensation, they'll get some compensation for that. So it really brings the whole family dynamics issues into the fold. So you pick up not only the financial metrics that you're looking for, uh, but also the family dynamics improvements. London's a long ways away from Santa Barbara, California. And I've been speaking on this topic within the United States um, fairly regularly in publishing. But no one is addressing this issue, and it's a very significant issue uh, to family offices. And so I felt a need or desire to want to come to London so I could reach the global family office community.